we want and how hard we work to try to make it happen. You God, know, it's exhausting. How it is. Put it down. It is. Just it, put it down. Put it down. It's a really tough lesson to learn. And it took me a long time to learn that lesson. So everybody listening tonight, I do not say that lightly. I think it's one of our uh, biggest lessons and really hard to do because we're so hardwired in how, what we've been taught. You know, I think especially as Americans, I always say like, you know, this country, we're really like, we're, you know, we, we work at a fast beat and I love that part mm -hmm. of the country, honestly, I really do. But I think when it's working against you is when you're feeling like you're on that hamster wheel. Right. And that rat race just gets the best of you in all of its forms, personally, professionally, physically, right. just stop yeah. and allow yourself to have to, goals. Yes. And just do it with hope. Like have your goals, do manifest them in the most beautiful of ways, but have hopefulness around it. Not expectation. Be, I think it's just yeah, so be much more joyful. Be the have joy, fun. be your light, be your love. How, yeah. I always say to people like connecting is supposed to be fun, right? We're mm. supposed to be having a little bit of fun here. I mean, we're on the earth or around. We might as well make like the best of it as we can. And, and what, right. has, what has happened is the more you lean into that, and I don't say this to be corny, but I really do believe it's true. The music is crisper. You hear the words in the song. The mm. trees where I live in New York, so we're, you know, we're in the middle of autumn and it, you see the colors in a different way. You really do. You do take a pause and stop and gratitude becomes finite it becomes really simple and it's not so bad and i know that sounds so spiritually corny i totally admit that it does but I there is a it. truth behind it there is a real she truth behind it at you, she'll say, angels don't lie angels don't lie welcome to the 200th episode of angels don't lie with your host Jeannie street god-based spiritual medium healer and author Today's episode is a divine discussion between Jeannie and internationally renowned psychic medium and author Marion DeMarco, who most recently wrote the book Medium Mentor, 10 Powerful Techniques to Awaken Divine Guidance for Yourself and Others. There is a reason why you've been led to listen today. You may be healing from grief or looking to connect with a past loved one. Or maybe you're just looking for guidance in your life to raise your vibration, feel uplifted and connected to a divine higher power and your higher self. No matter where you are on your journey and path, you're in the perfect place. We hope you enjoy the 200th episode of Angels Don't Lie. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Angels Don't Lie, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with the incredible... Marianne DeMarco. And Marianne is, uh, she's a world renowned psychic medium. She has a forthcoming book called Medium. Is it The Medium Mentor or Medium it's Mentor? Medium Mentor, just Medium Mentor. Medium Mentor. And um, yeah, I'll let you tell a little bit. You've been, you're on so many things. Your list of accomplishments are like mind blowing. Oh, thank you. I'm excited about the book coming out. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I appreciate it. I'm so happy to be here with you. This book is exciting to me. It's an, it's, we're in pre-order right now for the book. So um, I just announced it and it just came out and it's 10 steps to help you connect, find that power within. And, and uh, it's like, if the book is your own medium mentor, it's going to teach you how to uh, hear spirit, feel spirit, connect with spirit, communicate with spirit uh, for yourself and for others. So if you're looking to be a psychic medium, you'll get something out of it. And if you're looking to connect for yourself, you're going to definitely get something out of it. And I, I hope it helps a lot of people. I think it's, I mean, literally going to, definitely going to help a lot of people. And guys, I did put the link in the top of the description. So you can go to the page and pre-order the book, which is another thing to be excited about because you're doing um, a really yummy free, uh, yeah. gift with we're, it yeah we're calling like we're calling it like a celebration live mm -hmm. event and I think we can fit um up to 500 people on the um you wow. know I'm not very tech savvy guys so if you're if you're coming on I have people who are hopefully helping me with that and it'll uh it'll live stream and we'll just have a really good time it'll be a zoom call it'll be on like a zoom thing and we'll mm -hmm. just have a great time q a and talking about the books and I think I'm gonna walk people through uh, some of a meditation, maybe I, don't know, I have some tricks up my sleeve that will 
Oh, we'll do, I'm and then we'll sure go into you Q&A. do. Yeah, it'll be really fun. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to that. So let's, let's have like a nice fun conversation about, um, you know, your work lately and where the angels, where God, where your team is focusing in on um, supporting the people that come to you. The theme from my team, my universal team, our guides, loved ones, angels on the other side, God's source is wake them up, wake them up, wake them up, wake them up. So everybody who's coming to me is really looking to make connection in their own way. What's my service? How can I hear them? What can I do? It's what prompted the book. And mm -hmm. based on that and that call, that service call that I've been getting is really what the theme of my readings have been. It's been really consistent. So yes, your loved ones coming in, but very much about how, why are they coming in? Why are your angels and guides around you? What do they want to tell you? So it's very motivational in the sense that you are hearing guidance from that other side about who you are as a soul, uh, what that means for you and how you can really access your own knowing, your own information and the tools that you need to get that done. I love that. And I feel like it's, it's so beautiful, the knowing that people have and kind of deny and that's what's coming up. Wake them up, wake them up. You mm -hmm. know, I think, did, and I'm sure this probably happened with your last book. You had the same kind of theme go on and that's what inspired your last book. It did. It was um, many, many people since I started doing this work, you know, 10, 11 years ago, they always have asked me the same question. And it was a question that I remember asking sitting across from a psychic medium mm -hmm. or watching uh, like John Edward, I remember watching John Edward and, and saying out loud and not really knowing why I was saying it, oh, I can do that. I know that I can do that. And really wanting someone to show me how to do it. So the first book was very much about how do we navigate through roadblocks in our lives and how do we utilize um, our team to help us do that? And this book is about kind of kicking it up a notch in you know, really truly connecting to that guidance on a consistent basis, not just for a roadblock, but for everything that's going on in your life mm -hmm. and what that can mean for you and really waking up that light that you're entitled to have. Give yourself permission to connect to that power is really what it's all about. Because to your point, I think sometimes we're scared of it. We don't know what to do with it or we don't know where to access the information or how to access the information. And I know you, we've talked about this before. You want to also do it in a, in a very responsible way with some guidance. I took classes, you give classes, we teach classes. And I think it's a great guide for people because I think you can feel a little lost. I remember really feeling lost. And yeah. that's what made me write that first book. And it's definitely uh, coming up again for the second book. Yeah, it's not a fun place to feel lost. And I think we can totally connect with people when they say that, like, it, you know, for me, it pulls on those heartstrings of, yeah, so I totally wish somebody would have you know, I kept praying, like, can I have a guide? Can you, can you send me a teacher? Show me the way. And, and it, it was always like, I felt like a no, but really what it is for me at the time was, um, you're going to be the teacher. You're going to do that. And, mm -hmm. and similarly, I know that's, you know, your, your journey as well. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I have a mom who really, um, is and was a, a spiritualist. I mean, I was learning mm. about ascended masters and higher levels of consciousness and my third eye at a very <laughs> young age. I remember really meditating. We've talked about this at a young age, struggling to see that third eye in meditation classes with her. And so I had this access, I had the permission, mm. but she's not a psychic medium. So she couldn't really tell me what it 
felt like or sounded like or um, uh, what tool I can use? How can I be consistent in it? And so when I went to my beautiful teacher, Pat Longo, um, that just was, you know, guidance taking me there, spirit taking me there and saying, here you go, this is your person. And now you're going to learn how to do this. And then of course, what we learn, we teach, we give, we share. Right. And so that's, yeah, that's what I want to do. And tell me about your um, classes, because I was, you know, going on, I stalked you on your website before, because you did some <laughs> updates, which it looks great, by the way. Um, Thank you. I love all the, the new stuff, but Thanks. I see all those classes and I was like, wow, this is impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I've been doing workshops. Um, right now I have levels one through, I just added seven and I wow. do a series of workshops and um, it's a, it's a, it's a small group, which I really like. And I'm able to uh, really get intimate with my students and channel for them through their guides. Mm -hmm. Really, it's kind of really cool because I'm working with them. I'm showing how they can channel for themselves. Not all of them want to be psychics or healers, mediums. You know, some of them are really there to just. I know something's going on, and how do I mm -hmm. access it? You know, like so we're we're filling that that need. To, for more information, which they've mm -hmm. come searching. They, you know, I often say on my workshop one, I always tell people, con I congratulate them because something made them click the button, mm -hmm. whatever that guidance was. And I always tell them that was their first cue. That's the first time you're really listening to spirit and you're taking action on that. You're not just sitting waiting for something to happen. You're saying, no, I think I'm supposed to click this. I think I'm supposed to do this now. And so I started doing these workshops and everybody just kept asking me, can you do another level? Can you do another level? So I'm having a ton of fun with it. I have um, awesome. another series starting in the new year. Yeah. That is awesome. And, and it is so much fun. Like I, in my angel healer training, I'll have people come in. They don't want to necessarily be healers. They want to learn how to access, you know, their, their truth and to, um, to work with the angels and to work with that higher consciousness to heal their life or to navigate, you know, whatever they have going on in their life. Yeah, it's important work. I love your classes I, and, and right back at you. I love how you have everything set up and the flow of your classes. And um, I know we have students that, you know, go back and forth between the two of us. And I, and I love that because I think not only do you hear consistency by, you know, meeting other spiritualists and, and learning from them through their workshops and practices, but you also hear um, different types of styles. Mm -hmm. And I think it allows you to understand that, yes, there's a consistency in theme, but you can be your own authentic self in whatever style you want it to be, however it, it feeds you best. And I think it takes the pressure of what it's supposed to all look like. And it takes you know? time for it to integrate, right? Like, sure, yeah. It took us time. It took me time for like each teaching that I received to have it integrate and then put it into fruition. So you know, I, I love that too. No matter what you're going to learn, you're going to have that access to great information. And then you can integrate the things that are really popping to you. Yeah. And, and learning along the way is, is not only about learning how to connect to spirit, but learning your place in it all and how mm. it affects you. Cause you know, a lot of people coming into this work are dealing with fear. They're dealing with judgment. Yes you know, am I allowed to do this? What are people going to think of me? Am I going to be like the freak of the neighborhood, you know, <laughs> type of stuff. And when you are understanding that you, it's okay to feel those things. And then not only that, you're going to learn the tools to navigate through them, not around them, through them mm -hmm. and understand that, that those, those are some of your greatest lessons. And then it all yeah. becomes intuitive and instinctual. Yeah. You just know, right. I'm curious if you've noticed a theme, um, people are like really heavy on like the signs. This is a sign. This is a sign. I'm like, listen, guys, not everything's a sign. Like we got to stop just... like assigning this shit, but I'm just curious if you notice the same stuff. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think what I tell, what I tell my students and I, I'm sure you tell yours the same and my clients as well. When you see a sign or you've asked for a sign and you've seen it, set it and forget it. Don't keep asking for the same sign. Mm -hmm. And that's about trust. If you're really trusting the guidance and you're really believing in the fact that you're communicating with your angels, with your guides and your loved ones on the other side, and you've asked for that sign, and then you saw that really unique sign, they will gladly keep giving it to you as a wink. You know, we're here for you. We're, we're still doing it, but you don't have to keep asking because that's the trust. That's the trust part where you say, I know you've got it. Thank you. Can you also talk on um, when you receive a sign, how to validate it with spirit. 
Like, like I, say you're, say you didn't necessarily get it. You didn't necessarily ask for a sign, but something comes to you and, you know, everybody says, oh, well, that's a sign, but how, how can you validate it? I go into conversation with my guides. Mm -hmm. So either through writing meditation, remember guys, spirit comes in your own voice. So that conversation that can start to take place, let's say for argument's sake, the cardinal landed right on the fence, just at the time that you were asking your grandmother for guidance and there it is. And you're, there's no mistaking it for you. Don't question it. Again, we go back into the trust and allow yourself to receive it. Just feel it for a moment. Take that pause and listen, listen to what you might hear and use all of your senses, right? So the validation can come with all of the senses. So if you feel a sudden sense of just calmness, accept that, that's it, you've received, Yeah, right? I, love, I love that, just exactly what I would say too, like, you know, go, go directly to source, you know, call on your angels, call on God, and, you know, your ascended masters, whoever, and then wait for that, that calm to come and, mm -hmm. and your senses, your senses tell the story. Right. And you know, everybody has different senses cued into spirit yeah. for sure. So you'll know yours when you start to really practice this more and more. Yeah. It's not just the sixth sense, right? You know, your, exactly. your taste comes into it. Your smell comes into it. Uh, goosebumps, feelings, uh, mm -hmm. butterflies in your stomach. A lot of people, I never experienced anxiety until I started reading people. I didn't know. Uh, right. what that was, because it's usually the opposite, you know, we're dealing with so much anxiety and then we realize, oh, that's the energy around us as empaths or mediums and psychics. But for the most part, I, I never really had that. And then when I started reading people, I remember going to class and saying to my teacher, what the heck is this? Now I'm, I'm like right. whoo, whoo, trying to breathe on my way to class. And then I, and she said to me, oh yeah, that's kind of like occupational hazard. You know, you're feeling all that energy. And now of course I use it as a superpower, you know, like I know when energy is around and then I start to, yes. I take pause. Ah, I need to pay attention to something. Something's around me. Maybe I should write. Maybe mm -hmm. I should see something. Maybe I should just sit and listen or just be still. That's always a good one. Sometimes just being still is all you yeah, need. Sometimes just being still is the hardest part. It really is. Yeah. Do you also have the physical experience with a departed loved one? Like, um, being an empath, I receive, you know, internally so I can get, uh, their pain or whatever happened in order just to kind of describe. Yeah. And I, and, uh, and very, what I love to teach with, with highly empathic people, because I think there's a difference between being mm -hmm. empathic and sensing people around us and yep. really being highly empathic is that you want to sort of ask your guides, you know, can you make me a bystander in that storyline? So if you're a medium and you are reading someone and how they pass, we don't want to immerse ourselves in that passing, but we do right. want to understand the story. And so I always say they kind of give me the suggestion of their passing right? and what it feels like. So I'll feel, you know, a shot to the heart if they had a heart attack or I'll feel something run through the body if it was disease or John, John Holland always, and he's, and he's so right. You should learn the anatomy. And I keep, I keep having to <laughs> go and do that. I'm like, yes, right. that's right. Because sometimes I'm like, it's over here somewhere. I'm not really sure. Yeah, right, but, right. You know, but uh, yeah, I, I sort of get the suggestion of what's going on. And I think that that's um, a lot of practice because at first it was very overwhelming. I don't know if you experienced that. I'm sure you did, I've but it can be very this, overwhelming, like, right? Yeah, my whole life when I was a little girl, I could feel people's pain and sorrow in my body and I didn't yeah. know what that was. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, I, I think that's where like my specialty is, you know, around healing because that's how I came into this world, right? You know? plugged open, you know, dialed open. And so you could experience it and, and all that, you know, kind of hard stuff brought me to a place of realization and love, like, okay, sure. I don't have to, I don't have to carry this. I can put that down. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have to, you know, and I, and I've created, you know, uh, the program in order to teach people like how you can function being a highly sensitive person mm -hmm. in the world of spirit and, um, and in everyday life, because not everybody is going to want to connect. Not everybody's, you know, no, this that's where your this boundaries is come in. One. Right. Right. And you can be the CEO of your own spirituality, right? You got to be the leading lady like, of your life. Yes, you have to. And you can be, be your spiritual boss guys. If you are, mm -hmm. you know, not wanting to feel certain things. I mean, I was able to see death as a kid when I started to do this work, I, it was a hardcore. No, you know, I don't want to see death in that right. I can predict it or see it on somebody. Uh, you know, I didn't want to see it. I don't want to diagnose. I'm not a right. doctor. 
I have zero medical background. Don't give me diagnosis. Right. I'll, I'll talk about what already is existing in the body, but I don't really want to do those things. I don't want that. I, I don't like right. it. And so you can always say no. And I think also if you're, if you're experiencing that and you're not really understanding why, so if your grandmother is, is deceased, you know, and she keeps coming to you and you feeling how she passed, sometimes that's just how they're getting our attention. So we also right. must remember that's not what they're carrying with them. Right. And so the translation has to be learned. I love right. this. This is what I was going to ask you next. Next mm -hmm. is like coming up with your own language, your own your own dictionary. Uh, what are your signs and symbols, and what do they mean in your body? Yep, it's very important to come up with signs and symbols. Mm -hmm. You have to also remember that when you're in this world, there is the spiritual world, this this practice that it is that we must be consistent and mm -hmm. not dabble in it. And when you're consistent and really true to it whether it's once a week or every day, it doesn't matter as long as it's consistent and we're honoring it, we're understanding that we're channeling for the greater good of all concern. And you start to develop the different clairs, clairaudient, you know, clairvoyancy, clairsentience, and you're feeling all of these things and experiencing all of them. The more you sharpen your tool, the stronger it gets, just like anything else. And so as you start to see more, you'll start to understand those signs and symbols and why you're seeing repetitive things. You'll, you'll understand your dreams more, write them down. Use your own translation, use your imagination. They mm -hmm. are accessing everything that is in our mind, our entire life experience, your entire soul's experience. And they're accessing that to help translate. I wish they did walk in and they're like, hi, it's Uncle Joe. Remember me, I passed this way, but the frequency mm -hmm. just doesn't work like that. And so sometimes just coming in with spurts of signs and symbols is the best way that they can communicate. And the, the more you practice it, whether it's for yourself or others, you will get very proficient at it if you pay attention and you're consistent and write them down. I love a good signs and symbols book. Yeah, you me can too. Sort of write just, down it, and then translate. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no other real way to um, to stay consistent and then to have that confidence start building and and you starting to shine brightly because otherwise you're second guessing and denying or poo pooing everything and that's not a great place to live or, or ignoring it all. And then you're just, yeah. Yeah. Because feeling. it gets frustrating. It gets frustrating. Well, we tend to think that there it's like this, all of that access, right. That it's something so greater, but really it's something that's very finite and within us. Mm -hmm. And if you realize that it's just your own natural intuition that everybody is capable of doing, does that take the pressure off? So it's not stuff. that hard. Don't question it. Right? right. Go with that initial. I always say it's like a five second rule. Go with that initial thought. Go with that hindsight, something that feels positive. Understand what it feels like. The more you practice it, the better you get. Then it becomes instinctual. Mm. That's awesome. So we do have a couple of people on hold. They've, they're, um, they've been on for a <laughs> while. So you guys, if you want to talk to Marianne, ask a question. Are you good for this, Marianne? Sure. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Who are we speaking with? Uh, my name's Kristen Smith. Hi, Kristen. Hi. What is your question tonight, Kristen? Um, kind of just, I'm about to have this opportunity that could kind of turn into a career. And I was just kind of wondering like what you see with that like what it could turn into um, and kind of when? Mm. Um, the first thing I heard is small growth is big growth. And so yeah. if it's starting, if you feel like it might start off a little slow, I feel like there's a bigger payoff in the end. You have a lot of, um, okay. you have a lot of light energy. And when I say that, I mean like literally illuminated light that's ready to be shared. And so I love that I feel that sort of expansive feeling that's starting to take place. Let go of timing. Timing is just a okay. cruel little joke that we tell ourselves. Just lean into the divine timing. They're gonna show you the timing of things. What your job is, is to kind of lean into the flow of it. And I honestly, I really feel like you're stepping into that flow. So don't question yeah. it as it, when, when you're not leaning with, when you're not leading with fear anymore, you've kind of let that go at least about 15 months ago, you started to really work with fear and understand that it was getting the best of you. And now as you're starting to yeah. lean in, your voice is getting stronger too. 
I'm loving that for you. Like you're really understanding what it, what it feels like to feel in alignment with yourself. Don't question yeah. that. Okay. Because that's really like your strongest superpower right now. Are you feeling that Kristen? Yeah, definitely. Good, because you have a lot, like um, every time, every time I'm, you guys can see me, right? So every time you're, I can't see y'all, but you guys can see me. But every time I, I put out my hands, I can feel like the light is just illuminating from your hands, which tells me that you're going to reach a lot of people. And I do feel like within this job, you're going to have a lot more creativity than you've had in the past. Your voice is being heard. The next two to three months will be very telling too, by the way. So you'll get some answers. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. That's so awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great You're night. You're welcome. Love. You too. Have a good night. So hard making those decisions. Right. You know? It can be, um, and as long as you're not feeling like it's a chase, guys, and you're feeling like, yeah, this is my flow, this feels right, stick with the flow. They'll give you the breadcrumbs. Spirit will show you. All right, here we go. Okay. Hi, you're on the air with, with Jeannie and Marianne. This is Vanessa Johnson. <gasps> Vanessa! Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa is one of Hi, my, um, she's one of my mentor students. So I, I mentor one-on-one -on -one oh. and- Vanessa is one of my uh, past students that I haven't seen in a while, and I miss you so much. Hello, my love. I miss you. I miss you. Hello. I miss you, too. I'm uh, looking forward to speaking to you. Happy New Year. Congratulations on your book. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. What's your question? Okay, so, I, so my question is, every time that I meditate, I receive an old gospel hymn. Some of them I don't mm -hmm. even know, and then I know that I'm trying to figure out. A lot of it probably has to do with my grandmother and Nancy, mm -hmm. but they just stay with me all day long. There's something going on. So when and, you're in meditation and you hear that hymn, you can write down the words of the hymn mm -hmm. first and foremost, because that is going to give you a theme as to what it is they want you to pay attention to. Okay. Then what you can okay. do, and I know that I've taught you this, is you go right into your conversation with them and you ask them, what is it that you want me to know? You can be very direct with your guides and your loved ones. Ask them who, what, where, when, why. And then do not question the information. Now, they may show it to you through signs. Remember, they love to leave breadcrumbs, like I was just saying, and it's our job to pick up those breadcrumbs and to follow them and to act on them. We don't just sit complacent, right? We actually have to act on the guidance that's being given to us. But you're, for right. me, it's very, um, it's almost like I feel like they're giving you permission to allow yourself to be in this spiritual space. And your grandmother feels frustrated to me in that you can be godly and do this work. It doesn't Amen. have to be there one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's exactly what I've been other. getting to. Good, go, Jean. Like they're Jean, showing. Jeannie's gonna yeah, tell you more. Yeah, they're showing the same thing. Like when you're receiving, that is that is God talking to you. You're receiving that hymn in a reminder that you are doing God's work. And so, if you are standing in that presence of only that which is of God can come to me, your work is gonna really just open up and just be really bright. So your heart is tuned into that love. You feel on that, Vanessa? I hear you. Your heart is aligned with that. That's just who you are. It's how you came into this world. So everything that you're doing is is of God and for God. So I think you know the the kind of um, guilt I get around you is: am I am I doing this in the right way? Does this please the Lord? It's balanced, Vanessa. Yeah. You know, we've all been um, you know raised yes. a certain way and our backgrounds are what they are. And so we can utilize the best of all of that and incorporate that into our practice. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And so I think that I, first of all, I love uh, angel work around you. So Jeannie's perfect for that. If you, you know, uh, she works with, with angels and, and angel readings and really beautiful work. And you can, you can incorporate, remember, it has to be part of you. It has to feel authentic. It doesn't need to look like somebody else's practice. So do whatever resonates okay. with you most. And I feel like your grandmother is trying to show you that. 
Mm-hmm. And and what okay. better way to? I mean, I love song. Beautiful yeah. way to come to you. How how gorgeous is that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's true. And they stay with me all day long. And it's just something spiritual happens once that song is delivered. It's like something's taken over my body. Beautiful. Healing, yeah. love. And remember, we said, pay attention to all of the senses. So if it's affecting you physically, it should feel positive. And if it doesn't, tell them, knock it off. Right? It does feel positive. Good. But it's like I uh, go into a spiritual, my whole body is just, uh, has a different presence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The presence of the light, presence of God, presence of energy, presence of, of, a, of a different frequency. So all of it yeah. is, um, is part of the work and really beautiful. So, and then you can just go right into gratitude and thank them. And I agree with, that. with Marianne, okay. like write those, write the, uh, the words that are standing out. Don't do the whole song. The ones that just come to you, the, the few phrases mm. that are coming to you, like write that down because that in itself is the healing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I remember your signs and symbols book that, that the hymn is part of it. Now, you know, that that's your sign for when your grandmother wants to be near you and give you a message. Okay. Okay. I hope thank I see you, you soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. I hope so too. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Love her. It's the holiday season. And with all the hustle and bustle, we really can start to feel crazed. We're in the season of giving. And although giving is beautiful, sometimes it can also leave us feeling depleted and burnt out. There are gifts to buy and wrap, traditions to uphold, festive decorating to be done, parties to attend, elaborate meals to prepare, and the list seems to go on and on. Although the time and energy we spend on these things has quite a joyous return, it can also take us away from the time it takes for necessary self-care practices, such as adequate sleep, daily healthy meal prep, and movement of our bodies, among other things. Jeannie recognized this, and that's why she developed two different programs that are designed to support, uplift, and help you settle the calm. One of the groups, called Soul Shine, meets every other week on Tuesdays, and was developed as a way to support you in creating and maintaining regular habits and structures that keep your own cup full and you operating in your highest vibration. The other one is called Divine Miracles. It also meets bi-weekly on Thursdays and is designed for you to receive sacred wisdom, guided meditations, and angelic healing. This will support you to close out 2021 with joy and appreciation and prepare to step into 2022 with a grateful, loving heart and an abundant mindset. Jeannie will share her God-based method for attracting your desires by connecting you to your light room in heaven, where you will learn the steps to co-create with the divine and manifest your dreams into fruition. You might feel like you're too busy this time of year and can't possibly add one more thing to your plate. And I understand that, but let me ask you this. What would it be like to add something to your life that gives you back more than you put into it? A space for you to nurture yourself, to be kind, to develop your higher self practices, to belong to a group of like-minded souls to help you stay grounded in love and feel divinely supported as you navigate all the challenges of the season and beyond? Sounds good, doesn't it? Love when songs come in. Isn't that, I love when songs come in. Yeah. Such a great frame of reference. You're on the air with Marianne and Jeannie. Who are we talking to? Hi, Jeannie. It's Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Hi, Cheryl. Good. How are you? Hi. (laughs) How are you? (laughs) Good. Um, I had a couple, I have a couple questions, a couple questions. I have a couple of situations. I've been working on fear, fear based. So do you I'm see not, where my hand is? Not that I'm on your heart. I, I can't right, see you I went, because I turned off my, <laughs> Oh, good for you. I went right to my heart. I felt your fear coming right up. Uh, I could totally feel your energy. Oh, yeah. It's okay. okay. So it is fear. <laughs> sure. It's part of who we okay. are. Why not? Um, fear never really goes away. You know? Yeah. I mean, we have to, you know, it's always kind of looming there. Just like our egos, like love to hang around. Um, see what, see how they can yeah, mess us up. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. I'm constantly working on that. Um, so one being that 
I might, I possibly might have to move again and I don't want to move again. Um, I like it where we're living. Um, so that's one situation. My second is my daughter and, um, I'm just like constantly picking up all her energy, um, Mm -hmm. and what she's going through. And I'm kind of like picking that up and and keeping it with me. Um, is, and, and I feel like sometimes I fall back of like, I want to fix it, even though I know I can't and that type of thing. So I, 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 you know, I'm just, um, these are the two situations that are. Don't we just have parallel lives right now? We have parallel lives going on, my friend. Uh, So Mm -hmm. here's, here's what I'll tell you about the fear. Never make a decision based off of fear, right? Fear will just get the best of us every single time. So what you want to try and do is acknowledge the fear. Don't set it aside, acknowledge it. And then ask your guides to show you what you're most fearful and why. And I, I like to do this little word game, right? So if mm-hmm. what's causing you the fear and you sort of let your guides give you the adjectives that lead to the fear, it might be situational too. I mean, you can kind of sort of remember something and why, what's triggering it, but you like to sort of get to the root of the problem. And then you replace those words with something mm-hmm. positive as if the fear didn't, wasn't there. What would you be able to then accomplish, right? That starts to just shift the energy and change the energy. The move feels like you're trying to fit a square peg into a circle. Oh, I just keep getting this, Mm -hmm. right? So to me, that timing is off. And again, we go back into flow. Let it be revealed to you. You're searching for the answer, but the answer is already going to be given to you, whether whether you agree with it or not, it's still going to be given to you. And then you'll know what to do based off of that. Right. So I feel like that fear is driving the investigation of what to do. Right. And then we get on that hamster wheel. That's always a pleasure. Yeah. Right. That's not fun. Yeah. So that's the move part. And then your daughter, her, she is such a thinker for me. There's so much Mm -hmm. going on up here. And so because you're a wonderful mother, you're a sponge for that energy. And of course, your instinct is to want to fix it. And so, but we're, you know, I could feel like you're, you're ready to let her fly in some way. And so what I do Mm -hmm. and what my guides have shown me and what I do even before my readings is I ask my guides, especially in my mothering, when I, you know, they're at an age when I can't help them all the time and fix things. I say, dear spirit, please give me the words to serve. Please give me the guidance to serve them, whether that's through support, supportive information, just a good listening ear. Right. And that allows, and then you ask their guides to help them on their path. Their guides and loved ones help them on their path. You can put, um, and Jeannie can talk to about like, you could put like remote light into them, right too, Jeannie? Yep, to help absolutely. with healing. Yep. You can surround yourself okay. with, with um, a white light of protection, which will help you to be a buffer so you're not taking on that energy um, and keep it so you can actually navigate navigate through it rather than have it be sponged within which confuses and makes the thoughts go crazy um you know you've had this this thing with your daughter for so long but you've done so well shell i want yeah. you to remember like you've done such a great job even that you're really good mom that you're recognizing the fear where you weren't even recognizing that before you're you're actually stopping True. and and you're not reacting you're you're giving it a nice love thought rather than like a, like, I gotta, I gotta fix, I gotta fix. True. It is true. And since we're not living together anymore also helps with the boundaries. Yeah. It's control too. You know, as parents, you know, we're used to being able to kind of control their day in and day out. And as they grow, we're like, Oh, (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. where's my role now? What do I do? Right. So now you can really play around and, and help your, your soul as well in really starting to rewrite your role and what you want it to look like for you now and how you want to be defined, right? So you can kind of bring it back to yourself, still doing a beautiful job mothering because you're an extraordinary, you're a fierce mother is what they tell me. Fierce, tiger mother, love that, right? And so you just want to allocate that kind of energy in a different way. And that's just, it's perception, it's perspective. 
it's changing our response. It takes a little work. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy. I don't say that in an easy way, but you can get there as long mm -hmm. as you're consistent with it. Your guides will show you how. And I really love this okay. for you because you're, you're teaching her how to be a mother by you doing it. You don't have to yep. tell her just by you doing this. You're also showing her it's safe to, to release a little bit. So as she, as her kids get older, she'll be able to do the same thing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cheryl, okay. Lots of thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. Thank you again. Bye. All righty. Thank you. Bye. I so feel her journey. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> sure, parenting's tough. I know, right? I, like, right, I love my kids, they're great, but still. It's, it, I know, we don't want to smother. I know, I'm like, okay, go fly. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air with Marianne and Jeannie. Who am I speaking with? Hi, it's Karina. Hi, Karina. Karina. Oh, <laughs> Karina, we love you. Hi, I just popped on. I didn't know if I'd, I'd get to talk to you, but I'm just loving your energy. Both of you. I needed you today. Isn't it fun? Like to have, have us both here. Yes. Are you kidding me? I have both of you in the same space. This is everything. <laughs> Karina How are you? is a student of both of ours, everybody. Um, so we work with her. Yeah. Love you, Karina. I love you guys. Both of you. I think that my question would be, how can I align with joy? I'm trying to create more of it and I'm trying to learn how to align with it more. It's a good juicy one. It is a good juicy one. I mean, I have something right out the gate. Lower your ex, don't, don't work with expectation, work with hope. Oh, I like that. And I, if, and I feel like you don't have to do anything. You just have to be it. That's right. If you, so put, you, if you put expectations on things, then mm -hmm. you're trying to be it. You're trying to yeah. work towards something. You're trying to achieve it. Yeah. Just w live with hopefulness in that mm -hmm. it lives within you. It resides within you. It already exists. It's already there. And the ways, the technical ways in order to feel that more and experience it more will be revealed to you because hopefulness is just so vast. You know, there's no lid on it. And when we, when we work with expectations, that's us just testing ourselves again. That's that time frame, that schedule, how, what it's supposed to look like. Oh, does it look like that person's Instagram page, their Facebook page, because they're really experiencing joy. Maybe I should have it look like that too, right? We play with ourselves in a really bad way that way. Let it all go, set it and forget it. And you just say, I am the joy. Mm -hmm. Go back and repeat that to yourself. I am the joy. And then all the icing on the cake of joy will be revealed to you. But you're the joy. You are it. It's you. Yeah, the joy is in the heart, right? And so yep. you smile from the joy. You you um, dress like you just are the joy. And so everything that you do kind of matches that. It's not a forceful thing. It's not a trying thing. It's just a gentle, like Marianne said, I am joy. I am. I am my joy. Amen. The joy. The joy is within. <laughs> the joy I seek is within me. We should, we're going to get you like a mug made. We're going to make a mug. Right. We'll get a t-shirt. Because <laughs> I love when spirit comes out with good, good social quotes, right? Like, but you are, you are the joy. And I'm looking at Jeannie's beautiful artwork behind her. Remember your creative expression. Mm. Paint your joy. Mm -hmm. What it look like to you? Yeah. Creatively. Channel it. It's already mm. in there, right? So if you know that it's in there and you can access it through art, Allow it to be on the canvas so then you can see it visually if you feel if you need it more tangible. But it's already there. Yeah. Just to access it. And it'll and it'll reveal itself. It'll show you what it looks like on the canvas. Mm, that Karina, so I love good. your yes. I love your voice. You know, they just keep showing me you using your voice and singing and like just mm -hmm. like opening up. Like I want your voice to be heard. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's not singing. Can you sing, Karina? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually, I loved it. But, and I was talking to a friend recently about how we used to sing more when we were children. And then when we closed our throat chakras, we just stopped doing it. But now I sing a lot just with myself for myself. I do a lot of Kundalini like chanting and it does feel really good. The resonance of my voice makes me feel at home. Yeah. 
beautiful. And that's what they're showing. Like that's joy. Like that's creative. That's flow. That feels so good. Even mm -hmm. all these things, just saying this, I feel my joy and your words. Thank you for the mirror women. You beautiful, beautiful women. I needed the mirror. Thank you. You are the joy girl. You are go be it. Deal. Have a beautiful Serena, night. Love you. Thank you. Love you both. Bye. 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 I, I love that conversation about, um, you know, what we want and how hard we work to try to make it happen. You know, it's exhausting. How it's so fucking exhausting. Like it is. put it down. It is. Just it, put it down. Put it down. It's a really tough lesson to learn. And it took me a long time to learn that lesson. So everybody listening tonight, I do not say that lightly. I think it's one of our uh, biggest lessons and really hard to do because we're so hardwired in how, what we've been taught. You know, I think especially as Americans, I always say like, you know, this country, we're really like, we're, you know, we, we work at a fast beat and I love that part right. of the country, honestly, I really do. But I think when it's working against you is when you're feeling like you're on that hamster wheel. Right. And that rat race just gets the best of you in all of its forms, personally, professionally, physically, right. just stop yeah. and allow yourself to have to, goals. Yes. And just do it with hope. Like have your goals, do manifest them in the most beautiful of ways, but have hopefulness around it. Not expectation. Be, I think it's just yeah, so much more joyful. Be the have joy, fun. be your light, be your love. How, yeah. I always say to people like connecting is supposed to be fun, right? We're mm. supposed to be having a little bit of fun here. I mean, we're on the earthly realm. We might as well make like the best of it as we can. And, and what, right. has, what has happened is the more you lean into that, and I don't say this to be corny, but I really do believe it's true. The music is crisper. You hear the words in the song. The mm. trees where I live in New York, so we're, you know, we're in the middle of autumn and it, you see the colors in a different way. You really do. You do take a pause and stop and gratitude becomes finite it becomes really simple and it's not so bad and i know that sounds so spiritually corny i totally admit that it does but there I is a truth it. behind it there is a real truth behind it i have to just you have leaves still on your trees i do yeah we've had a weird <laughs> like mild um i don't know we've had like a weird mildly thing i have these two trees that when i drive into my development i never noticed them before hmm. and and they're huge they've been there forever and i've lived here for years and this year is finally like, and I don't know if it's because we were all forced to kind of sit and pause, you know, mm -hmm. through the pandemic so much, but I finally noticed them. And I was like, oh, this is the core. I'm not wooey guys. Like it's not really my jam, but I did. I was like, so great. Like, I just <laughs> want to give that gratitude and thank you guys. You yes. I feel my, yes, I feel yes, the fire yes. of the leaves, you know, but it is kind of fun and that is fun. It's just fun to do. So do it. It's awesome. All yeah. right, hold on. We got another call. Okay. <laughs> I loved when you just did that. That was yeah, great. It happens. <laughs> Hi, thank you for calling Angels Don't Lie. Who are we talking to? Hello. Hi, Jeannie. Hello. This is Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you, love? I'm hanging in. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm sitting here with my dear friend and all of you having so much fun. Hi, Nancy. Found it. Hi. Hi. I just wondered if you, if I have any messages from my mom and my dad for surrounding me. Yeah, you do. They each put a hand on each one of your shoulders. So one hand on one and one on the other, like side. So they're like side by side to you. Um, okay. They're consoling you a lot and really bringing you a lot of comfort is what they're trying to do. Okay. They do. Sometimes. And yeah. Yeah. And your mom for me really feels like she's been trying to get through more. There's a bit of a wall there, like communication wise. Sometimes that's just based okay. on our energy too. You know, if we're at a low vibration, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to sort of get to us. I always wonder if that makes okay. people feel a little spiritually abandoned. You know, like you kind of think, well, I don't hear them. You know, they're not coming to me, but she really is trying. And what, here's one of my favorite symbols that your, that your loved ones just showed me. I saw a flat mm -hmm. calm on a lake 
Um, and anytime I see that, it's always a sign for me that what is coming your way is very peaceful. Mm. And it's one of my oh, favorite that's... symbols to see. Yeah, so if you can get that visual in your head, it, because behind mm -hmm. you, it, honestly, um, uh, your, the energy is, uh, it feels a little chaotic. You know, it, you have a yes. lot going on. Yeah. I do. I know, like Mama. That. And I'm sending you, I'm sending you, you, you know, sometimes we can ask spirit, hey, dudes, like one thing at a time, help me compartmentalize what I can do first to kind of bring some calm. Mm -hmm. Your physical well being, also feeling um, like I want to put light into you so you feel nice and grounded. You know, sometimes with stress, our bodies just get taxed, right? And so it's always, it's a balance yeah. of the mind, body, and soul, letting go of the idea that balance is a real thing, right? Balance is really just us spinning plates, guys, right? We're always trying to spin the plates. And when one falls, we try to just put, but you are like juggling. You are, you're like doing a whole oh, act yeah. here for me. Yeah. You so hit right, you hit right. I'm oh, overwhelmed. I, I feel you, mama. And so when you're oh, feeling please. overwhelmed, visualize that calm lake. You can even put a little like a rowboat out there and sit with your parents if you okay. want and have good conversation, you know? Uh, but your mom, <laughs> your mom really trying to make her presence known to you. And I want you to pay attention with okay. numbers with her. Okay. Uh, so okay. Uh, angel numbers, you know, like 11, 11, 333, don't, don't excuse. And sometimes it's just the same time on the clock. You know, Kyle, repetitive. Kyle Gray's book, Angel Numbers. Oh yeah, I love it's the best. That. It's it's my favorite. I know two 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 comes up a lot for me because I'm not that here. Yeah, yeah. So look look for that. I'm looking all around my desk because okay. I know Kyle's Kyle's book is. Oh, here it is. It's the best, so, right? Yeah, it's so great, guys. And you should. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure somebody will tag it for you. Um, but if, if somebody wants to tag Kyle's book, but two 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 here, you want to hear what Kyle says about it? You have the ability to sure. lift up the hearts of all those around you like an angel on earth. You were mm. born to shine. And that is the truth. You're such a beautiful healer. Oh, you're mm, you're always day. taking care of everybody else. So I, you know, your guide to kind of remember yeah. yourself and all of that chaos, my friend. I know. I know. I have okay. a lot. I have a lot going on. It's gonna yeah. be okay. My husband. I feel like you're I feel like you're stepping out of the chaos though. Like like yes. a lot. Yeah. A little bit. Beautiful. But then it comes back. <laughs> well, you know, there'll always financial. be something to juggle, right? We'll always yeah. have something, yeah. but trust always. that you're, yeah. trust that you're being guided and protected and all of that, because your parents are really like right on either side of you. Okay. And I have my, sister. my sister is like my, oh, she's my everything. My sister, yeah. Cheryl, mm -hmm. who, who just was on a little while ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you, you yeah. know, lean, lean What's on it? and, you know, look what I love, what I see about you when shifting and, and Jeannie, I, you'll probably feel this too. And I'm sure you are. I do feel you reaching out more. You know, I feel like you are kind of asking for help or knowing that it's needed or, you know, work on those boundaries. Yeah. Remember yeah. you're allowed to say no. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nancy, I've got a, a, a really great workshop that you would love in December. Um, we're doing it in the 16th and the 30th and it's, it's, preparing to step into the new year in the energy that we're choosing. I feel like it's perfect Ooh, and it comes at this great one. time for you. Yeah. So this uh, Colleen, um, it's in, it's here in uh, New Milford at the silo. So one of my people oh, will put it in the comment section so you guys can have it. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. That was okay. Uh, hold I'm, your faith, girl. Yeah. You're doing so yes. great. Remember that calm lake. I'm Thank out there you. with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will. I will. Thanks, Beautiful. Nancy. Thank you. That really made my day. That helped a lot. Oh, I'm so I glad, Nancy. It. Have a great night. Thank name. you. Love. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. She's like a little healer on earth, isn't she? Um, my God, I love that you were doing the whole lake thing because literally I did a meditation with my group earlier today where we were calming the central nervous system and that's what we were doing with water. It was amazing. Mm. And then you brought that in and I was like, oh, yes, so great. like- like it, and I just see her like stepping into the, this new calmer space, even though life happens, you can still return to a calm and show up in a different energy. Absolutely. And the more you learn about this type of work, the more that you bring it into your life consistently, mm -hmm. the more you look at what we experience in this earthly human realm, which can sometimes be really super chaotic with a, a sense of empowerment behind it. You kind of feel like 
you can come in, you know, with your spiritual tools, like, all right, yeah. I'm ready for this one. You get know, her you done. Sort of come in, yeah, 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 and you kind of come in fighting a little bit differently. You know, right. your perspective changes a little bit. And it's just, again, we lean back into that trust, knowing that you can do this, you have the tools, you're going to navigate it, you know, and, and some, some things are really devastating, you know, but yeah. you'll always have that underlying feeling of protection and safety, mm. and guidance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Hold on. We got more. We got a couple more. We have time for a couple more calls. So great. We'll do the best we can get to everybody. Hi, you're on the air with Jeannie and Marianne. Who are we speaking with? Hi, Jeannie. It's Tina. How are you? Good, Tina. How are you, love? I'm doing great. Uh, well, Long time. I guess I'm doing great. I'm a little all, I, a little all over the place, I feel. What is your question? Um, I just want to see if any of my family is around me. I have um, a few siblings and my parents on the other side. I'm getting a huge yes, Marianne. You want to jump in here? They're like, yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just kind of, I, I don't know. They're kind of making me read your energy first. And, and sometimes they'll always bring it back to you and your energy first and what you can do, you know? And so do you do grounding work? Are you, do you work on grounding yourself more? I try, I've tried, I've done it in the past, but right now my life seems to be like so out of yeah. control. Um, not so much out of control, but my job is stressful, um, things going on um, as far as my daughter, um, trying to mm -hmm. find somebody in my life to be with. And yeah. it just seems like I'm rushing things. Yeah. And so I think that's why they brought me back to your energy first, because everything about your energy right now made me want to go, you know, breath work. <laughs> yeah. It, breath work is a really easy thing to do for grounding. So remember, it doesn't have to look like you sat down at your altar and you burned your sage today and you brought in the light and then you sat and you did a meditation to theta waves and you know some of us just don't have the time right or it just right. feels really chaotic and and we can't get to it and honestly sometimes it just doesn't feel like it aligns with our personality right so right. for you i love taking a deep breath with a positive affirmation attached to it okay uh, you said your mom has passed on mm -hmm. the other side, correct? Both my, both my mom and my dad and I have. Your um, mom just came uh, over and um, your mom came over to you and put her, put her hands on your face, on either side of your face. Okay. And she said, I'm right in front of you. She goes, all you have to do is look for me. She's a flash of light a lot for you, by the way. So if you see lots of flashes oh of light. Oh my gosh, I see it out of the corner of my eye all the time. So say hi to your mom, because that's how she likes to come through to you. She talks about February okay. being um, really important as well. She's put a big when heart. She died. Okay. So um, remember, she said, don't focus on my passing, focus on the love of February. Because when we're manifesting love, we want to focus on that. So remember, it's like perception mm -hmm. change, right? She said, my right. God, let's find somebody that deserves uh you that you deserve stop you're always you always have somebody who like clips your wings for me i need someone who makes you helps you fly or who's watching you fly and they're like look at her she's flying that's my girl right there look at her fly i want somebody who celebrates yeah. you and she says it's all been nonsense in the past she went like that <laughs> she's absolutely right yeah so she's um, opening those doors and i also like somebody either in uniform or somebody who's protective around you. Um, because I feel like you're, okay, perfect. Um, did you wear a uniform in life? Actually, this is someone yeah, coming your way. Me. This is somebody coming your way where oh. I feel like you've always been the one to have to step forward and protect everybody else. And I feel like you're gonna finally uh -huh. have somebody who's going to step up for you. In a uniform? Uh, it, it could be this, my symbol for somebody protective. 
Okay. So don't, don't necessarily, I yeah. never, I never like when I'm like, his name is Mike and he's wearing uniform because then yeah. I'm like, <laughs> okay, then okay. I always feel like the person's like, his name wasn't Mike and he wasn't in uniform. Meantime, could have been the guy, right? Yeah. And so, I'll be looking for every guy that's named Mike. <laughs> exactly. So don't do that. But they have a protective personality. Yeah. They want somebody who finally puts you first. Not yeah. that you need it. You deserve it. Big difference. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as you got on Tina, I was getting, I kept seeing, um, the football, the football, they were like surrounding you. Um, I feel like your brothers and your dad, they, they were like on a field and it was all like, you know, just around football. And I was just feeling you were so protected by this pack of, you know, yeah. men, my brothers and my, my siblings and my, I, I, my siblings of my brothers have always been very protective of me. Mm -hmm. Um, my one brother who passed Ricky, um, he passed when I was 15. He was very protective of me, but my dad too, my dad delivered me at home. So he was, I was a little special. <laughs> oh, I love that. So look at I, no, yeah. like this makes so much sense. What Marianne is saying about like your mom wants someone that's going to put you first and protect you because this is, this is who you are as a soul. You came into this protective life and that's who, what you deserve not to, you know, dim your light in order to just have any old guy just to be in a That's relationship. Right. And I've been seeing that, I've been seeing that, that quote lately, don't dim your light. Um, Love that. I, I forget the end of it, but don't dim your light to, to something like to basically. make somebody else shine or something like that, or like, to, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You deserve it. You know, but and I like I said, it's it. not that you need the protection. It's that you deserve the protection. You're really strong. Um, you have so much to offer and so much to give. You're incredibly nurturing as well. And I, your, your mom, and they're just insisting that you find somebody that celebrates that. That's what we, that's what they're wanting for you. So I want for you. Yeah, I agree. I feel like yeah. that's so and, brightly. So, and just one more question about my daughter. Do you see anything with her and I, we kind of at odds right now with different things. You know, your daughter, um, she needs to, she, her mind for me, she needs to feel like she's being heard or she's really frustrated. Yeah. I get like angry, the same, like I get this, like, um, just shooting from the hip and not really like, it's not mm -hmm. in her heart. It's just, she's just reactive. Yeah. Like a little lightning right. bolt yeah. coming out, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there. Oh my you know? God. Have no, I, she just <laughs> seems to have taken this divorce and me leaving her father and she sees me as the bad one and I was physically abused. So, yeah. you know, I see pictures on her Facebook of him and her and blah, blah, blah. And I get none of that. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to deal with that. And I, I get it. I get it. Daddy's little girl. I get it. Um, but it's, it can be very hurtful. And I have Absolutely. kind of pulled away a bit. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, look, I'm divorced. I'm remarried. I, you know, I, my children have experienced it. I understand it in a lot of, lot of ways. And what I heard was, um, don't never apologize for your truth. And just, uh, just own that truth. You don't have to explain it, retell the story. Right. Um, just leave it where it is. And she'll, she'll come around. You're very honest and you're super nurturing and truth will always be truth and will always be revealed. Remember right. that you don't have to do and anything that, for right. truth to be revealed. And I truly believe that. Yep. This is, and this I is have the same advice. advice about this is the same advice yeah. I've been and giving my no daughter. Regrets. Keep being in I have your no truth. regrets about the marriage. Yeah. Like I have no regrets about the marriage ending. None at all. No, there's only Except lessons. Her. Yeah. And take those lessons right. and she'll learn her own lessons. Um, I just recently was talking to somebody about we can't we can't um edit someone else's soul contract. We can't teach somebody else their own contract, even our own children. Yeah. And you know, right. we have to kind of just let them experience and learn. Uh, the more you, more you stand firm in your truth it, without even any explanation, I feel like the more she's going to see that. And I'm going to tell you this, she will celebrate you. I agree. I promise I you. Like you. I don't think you need to say much. I think you need to just keep mm -hmm. standing and keep showing up. And if when it, it hurts you, if it comes up, you can share it, you know, gently. And I do feel like this is going to pass. I think it's going to turn around. I think so too. It's been a long time, a long time coming. <laughs> I know, I know, but it will, yeah. it will, um, you know, 
they're showing me my relationship with my mom. I remember seeing her at one point, um, no longer as my mother, but as a woman. And I really got right. to, um, when I did that, when that perspective changed for me, I understood all of her decisions, whether I agreed with them or not. I had empathy in a much different way and understanding in a much different way. We're all just trying to do our best. And they're showing me that storyline. The reason why they do that is to translate over to you that that will be your storyline as well. She will see. Okay. I hope that resonated. Yeah. Did you lose it? Okay, good. Thank you, Tina. No, I Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Bye. Thank honey. you so much. Bye. Bye. Oh, this has been so good. So yummy. <laughs> um, want one more? We have, two, sure. we have two on the line. Okay. You are amazing. Right back at you. These Welcome to Angels Don't Lie. Hi, Hi. Who are you speaking to? My name is Christy. How are you? Good, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, you guys are so beautiful and amazing. Aww. And I just happened to find you. Um, yes. Well, so you're yes. Happy to <laughs> and everything that you've been talking about and everyone you've been talking to has resonated with me. So I want to thank you for that leading up to this. Um, mm. My dad passed in June and I've been receiving some really strong signs, um, also through music, license plates, um, when I drive normally, and then when I tell people, especially my mom, about these signs and symbols, um, I almost feel like I'm becoming the outcast of the family. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the group. Welcome to us. You can be part of our family. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome in. I found my tribe. <laughs> thank you. How, how do I let them know that he's here and to feel him? And then when, when I try to, I don't want to say convince them, but when I do try to convince them or talk to them about it, I almost feel like I'm losing a connection. So how do I stay consistent? That's a great question. I love that question. How do you deliver message without really delivering message, right? In a formal way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, your job isn't to convince them, you know, that's your, right. jo your job is not for that. And, and sometimes we want people to be there with us to, because we want them to feel as good as what we feel. And sometimes that message is just for you. That's right. So you can hold it. You can just feel it in your body. You can ask, does this need to be delivered before you share it? Because the more you get poo-pooed, the less you're going to do it, the less you're going to receive because you're not going to trust it. Or you're going to, you're going to be like, uh, you're going to start following their decision on who you really are. Spirit is incredible oh, in real, that. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, spirit's really cool in that if they want you to make connection with somebody for them, they will make that happen. We really don't have to make it happen for them. They show us the way, they're incredible that way. It could be that, you know, one of your siblings or your mom, you know, has a dream about your dad and then they open up, right? And they say, you know, I had this dream and they feel the need to share it with you. That's very calculated, you know, spirit does that. They'll say, you know, share it with her because mm -hmm. she has an experience too. So. To Jeannie's point, you can just keep it for yourself if you're being shunned or being made, you know, the roll in the eyes. Oh, the crazy one over there talks to the dead. That's me. <laughs> um, you know, it's know. totally fine. Yeah. And 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 what you and to Jeannie's point, you don't want to mute this for yourself, right? So honor right. it and and love it. Your dad is talking about you taking care of your mom. Um, yeah. and I and I feel like is she having balance problems? Anything yeah. in the legs or anything with a little bit of balance? Um, she actually was just diagnosed with broken heart syndrome. But oh. I don't know if that's affected her balance, but I think balance well, in they a different kind of felt, way, what kind of balance feel everyday like, life. I feel like you were helping her. He's showing me you kind of helping her stand. That's why I was asking that. So maybe he was just raising her up. You know, he's showing me that you're raising her up and keeping her from falling, quite honestly. But you can't, yeah. to Jeannie's point, and he's thanking you for that, by the way. Um, 
and he's watching mm-hmm. her nutrition and, and, you know, sort of how she's eating and things like that. And so he's got it, you know, he's trying to help as much as he can, I'm, but I'm feeding her. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing, that is your expression of love and you are listening to him. He is guiding you in taking care of her and helping out. And so you're already sort of delivering message to them through your action. It doesn't matter the source. Christy, I'm also oh, getting like all Thank of this, you. like big, a lot of stuff on your shoulders, a lot of stuff on your back. So that's my sign of making sure that you're really caring for yourself as well. Nurturing yourself. This has been a big, a big um, devastation for your family. So make sure yeah. that you are taking time to maybe get a massage and don't think of it as um, like unnecessary or vain or something. There's just saying like, no, lean into, you know, self-care. And your dad said it will okay. really help you to feel more confident in your decision-making because you do have a lot of decisions to make. Okay. Thank you. And bring the car in Thank for it too. Thank you so much. <laughs> bring the car. I love, oh I love God. that. <laughs> car, need, <Okay. laughs> car needs work. <laughs> we had a car connection. That's so funny. All right. So I that's why him. he's bringing up the cars because he's like, tell her to bring the car in. Mm-hmm. So he's uh, stickering with it. your car. I love there it. you go. Yeah, it's about the snow tires. It's time to put the snow tires on the car. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen to your dad. <laughs> see, listen to your dad. I know. Okay, thank you, lady. You're so welcome. Much. You're welcome up. Thank You're you welcome. so much. So looking forward to your book. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Bye, Christy. Bye. 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 Now. Bye. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. All right, one more. Hi, welcome to Angels Don't Lie. Who are we speaking to? Hi, uh, you're speaking to Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Good. Um, so I sort of have uh, uh, two questions. Um, one is, um, my mom, who lives with me, is 94, and, you know, she has dementia, and I'm just beginning to feel that she's starting to make the transition, mm. um, and I'm wondering if what I'm feeling is correct, and Is it going to be, I hope, a peaceful one? And will her friends or my dad or somebody come to her when that time comes? And well, I go ahead. have another one. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And my, my son is going to... Um, a difficult time and I'm just wondering if you're getting a sense that this will end soon and will it end in a relatively calm way like will things ultimately end up being okay oh, Sandra you, know, you have a lot going on is, is that... oh boy yeah yeah um, oh, I, I, I just want to, I want to address your mom's transition or, you know, pending transition. Sure. Like we all, we all have a pending transition, right? Um, sure. I immediately will tell you that w- when that day comes, which I don't know when that will be, but when that day comes, mm-hmm. she absolutely will re- be received, um, by her family and her loved ones and her friends, um, that I never questioned from all the years that I've been doing this work. And I'm sure Jeannie will tell you the same as, as harsh as it can be, as we view transition, what the physical body goes through, um, what the spiritual body is Mm -hmm. experiencing is really quite beautiful and, um, Mm -hmm. very peaceful. And so for me, and I've read, I've actually read, um, dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients, uh, in spiritual time, even though their physical body was here, their messages mm-hmm. came in through spiritual mm-hmm. time. I'm sure Jeannie's done that too. So it's really, really cool. So she's already being taken care mm-hmm. of in that way and absolutely will be received mm-hmm. in, a, in a well way. 
to your point about when that is, if you are feeling like transition is coming, your own guides and your own loved ones are probably speaking to you about that. And so my advice would be, because I don't determine timing for those types of things, don't question that right? Okay. Let that be part of your own guidance with no fear attached to it. Just sort of, I feel like this is coming. That's your own intuition and your own um, psychic guidance being given to you. Jeannie, how do you feel okay. about that? I'm agreeing a hundred percent. And, um, you know, because the, because this, the body is purifying, the soul is purifying before it leaves and exits to go to heaven. Your mom right. is doing that in real time. Mm -hmm. Some souls will do it, you know, on the other side, your mom's doing it here. So there isn't, a t we cannot put a time to that. And you probably mm -hmm. are already recognizing her leaving her body or being on the other, like she, she definitely has more than one foot on the other side, so to speak, where she's having, mm -hmm communion with with her loved ones with her parents she's already experiencing that that amount of love and that's what's going to really help mm -hmm. and lift her um again don't focus on mm -hmm. the timing rather be in your moments and i know you're such a deep caregiver and i feel all of this love and all of your ancestors supporting you in in all the things that you're doing to um make your family's life easier mm -hmm. right yeah, for, I, for your son. You know, um, just, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say for your son, they're showing again, it's a timing thing. Like there's, um, we all have big things to go through and we don't want to see our children have to go through these things, but they're saying it's a timing thing. And when he's ready for the big change, the, <laughs> A big step forward um and not a moment sooner they're mm -hmm. saying that's that's when things will be different but he's holding on to some old patterns and that is a really up to him it's not up to you so the best thing they're saying you could do yeah. is really prayer is like you know i feel like you're a very dedicated um a prayer woman so say your prayers offer mm -hmm. that offering to the holy mother like do that and that will really support him I agree about your yeah. son. He's very, um, there's something very organized about the way he thinks, almost almost military-like mm -hmm. to me where, you know, where there's like, there's a way to kind of do things. And I think this situation is really challenging him and kind of pushing him outside of his comfort zone because he's much more emotional oh, totally. for me. Yeah, so the emotions are being revealed totally. in a different way. Um, he's a really, a uh, good, good person. He just has to start believing that within himself. So there's a lot of self-reflection that's going on. And I think he just hasn't done this type of work yet. So it's new for him. Um, and okay. then going forward, when he gets new. through all of this, I have a lot of love uh, coming in his way, uh, relationships, and uh, he feels a lot more grounded and much more calm, but this is his moment. And like we were telling, um, was it Sandy? I think, you know, I uh, know you're Sandy. It was, um, Cheryl, maybe we were talking about giving remote love to your children. Yes. You know, you can give that over to them, give them light, ask their guides to help them out in things that we can't show them or help them out with. Give, you know, ask spirit to give you the words to serve and the guidance to serve your children in the best way, the greatest way so that they can find their growth and lessons. And I feel like that's sort of where he's at. Mm -hmm. He's definitely has, uh, you know, real transitional stuff. There's finance stuff, there's job stuff, there's home-based kind of stuff. It's all sort of a lot of moving parts, but he's also learning a lot about himself in the process and that can only be productive. Oh, that's interesting. I, I kind of feel that way myself. You know, he's, I can see, you know, a, a lot has happened to him. Mm -hmm. um, it, the job is a good thing, you know, that, yeah. that, that was changed and, and that happened and that's a positive thing. I just think that, you know, his relationship right now he's he's not they're not married but um they've been together for seven years and they have a little daughter that my son absolutely adores and i mean he's just so protective of her and i think he's just so worried about when this you know ends up you know his his uh, partner goes her way and you know how's that going to affect his daughter and i keep trying to reassert, reassure him that i think it's all going to be fine it's going to get sorted out and 
she's going to be fine, you know. But I do feel that way. I agree. I, I like I said, I feel like everything that's coming his way is is a lot about love relationships. So all of that starts to work out, but there's a lot about that he's learning with himself. A lot of that's pushing him out of his comfort zone. And there's a lot of moving parts that come yes. along with that, but it'll come together. He just has to be patient and trust. Yes. Yeah. Always the fun one, yes. right? <laughs> Thank you, yes. love, for calling in. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Have a beautiful thank evening. You. Thank you. You Good night. Too. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, Marianne, this has been like one full evening. Like we had some Yay. great combo, just you and I. And then yes. you know, now we have like all of these beautiful calls made, all of these connections and just really raised the vibration. <laughs> I love it. 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 It was, it was a great conversation. I love the callers. Thank you so much for having me and inviting me on. I never really get a chance to do these things that much anymore and, and to speak with you and, and, and everybody who's listening, I just want you to know something about Jeannie, which she is so humble and would never say. Um, she's a really giving soul to people who are in this line of work. And you don't always meet that in this line of work, to be quite honest. And to have somebody who wants to help other light workers and spread that light and give and have a sense of community and there's room for all um, is really beautiful. So I always just want to honor that in you and people should know that about you. It's Thank a really beautiful, beautiful you. thing. You, you don't always get that all the time. Thank you. And I, and I honor, I so honor you. I did put your, um, your website link into the, the comment section, I mean, into the copy, but can you just tell them really quick how to find you, where to hang out with you and anything that you have sure. coming up so they can. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Um, my website is mariandmarco.com, D-I-M-A-R-C-O. And my Instagram and Facebook are Mary and the Medium. So you can find me there. I have, um, everything's on my website for events, but my pre-order is uh, out right now for Medium Mentor, which I'm really excited about. And yes. you, if you pre-order now, yep, I'm doing a live event. I'm calling it a celebration because I honestly don't know what spirit's going to have it look like. I always sort of rely on spirit. So I just decided to call it a celebration. And the first uh, 500 people who order the book will um, receive information that and you, you order, you pre-order the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble or indiebooks.com. And then if you go back to my website and just fill out the information, you'll be put on the list and sent a link. And um, coming 2022, oh gosh, lots of things, workshops and hopefully some live events. And um, I'll be out, you know, around New York and wherever else they want to take me to, um, you know, have some fun with the book and share it with everybody. I'm really looking forward to it. That is awesome. 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 Thank you. Thank you again for, for joining us live and for sharing all of your beautiful gifts with the world. It really thank you. is amazing. And thank, thank you, you to all our, our people that tuned in tonight. Thank you, guys, you everybody. You know, you know, I know what I know because angels don't lie. When she smiles at you, she'll say, angels don't lie.